All right, today's Working Woman Wednesday was featured on Black Girls Rock. She gave an incredible speech, and who knew she was right here in our own backyard? Yes. Her name is Marina Robinson <laughs> Snowden. Does it Snowden or Snowden? Snowden. Snowden, Snowden I'm sorry. but no relation to the other Snowden. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> Marina <laughs> Robinson <laughs> right. Snowden. And um, and when I saw your speech on Black Girls Rock, mm-hmm. I was I was inspired. I actually saw it through one of my girlfriends, Danielle. We went to Elizabeth Seat together, but she went okay. to FAMU. Yeah, right. And so, so, yeah, when I saw, you know, I don't know how, I think she must have reposted your speech sure, or something. I saw sure. it and I was just like, wow, that's awesome. So I appreciate I, it. I saw that you went to FAMU and then I'm talking mm-hmm. to my producer. He says, no, she actually, she's right here in D.C. I yeah. said, she's in D.C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. her on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Marina on I appreciate the show. it. I, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. Yes. We're glad to have you. <laughs> yeah. Now, for, for those who don't know, with Black Girls Rock, you were honored for what exactly? So the award is called um, Girls Rock Tech. So it's mm-hmm. an award that they give out every um, ceremony or every award cycle to somebody in the tech field so whether you are at the high school level all the way up to professional like CEOs and executives they try to highlight um, people doing black women doing work in the tech space so STEM from engineering to uh, mathematics Mm -hmm. but then also really innovative ways you know applications in the field so like um, black girls code would be one okay initiatives that people are pushing so ways to highlight um, that space and so within STEM tell us a little bit about about what you do because sure, sure. what you do I don't even know if I could pronounce <laughs> half <laughs> yeah. of the wording yeah you absolutely could so I'm a, so I'm a nuclear engineer by training okay um, and I work in the nuclear security space so when people typically think about nuclear engineering the first thing that comes to mind normally is like power reactors so right. you're trying to create electricity right we need to plug in our phones that kind of thing okay. that's one lane in nuclear engineering I'm the other lane nuclear weapons right oh. so when we talk about this security, is serious it's serious and it's and what's interesting is it's been in the news right so we have a lot of kind of knowledge just from listening to what's going on with Iran what's right. going on with North Korea all of this is about who should and should not have nuclear weapons how they'll how they'll be used kind of in diplomacy right between mm-hmm. countries if we ever if any if anything ever popped off between us and, us and Russia mm. how that would work right so okay. that's kind of the things that I study from a technical perspective how the, the weapons actually work but wow. also how they're used within government so a lot of times you're seeing things before they even hit the news before <laughs> right. we even see it. well it's really interesting so I, I spent a year in the government um, mm. there's an agency called the National Nuclear Security Administration that administration is responsible for basically keeping tabs and, 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 and the upkeep of, of our nuclear weapons right the United States has somewhere on the order of like 7,000, 4,000, depends on who you talk to because a lot of this is classified, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But as a researcher outside of the government, what I'm responsible for is really looking for what's emerging, what the trends are, right? So if, if, you know, Trump gets elected, what does that mean for our nuclear Mm -hmm. posture and for our, how we think about using our weapons, right? So it is kind of thinking about what's about to happen before it happens. So how does someone get into nuclear engineering? Like Mm -hmm. when you went to FAMU, did you know that, and and are you, are you from here? Are you from no, no. I'm, I'm originally from Miami. Okay, so you're mm-hmm. from okay, so you're from Miami. Yeah, yep. And as a young person in Miami, did you say I want to go into nuclear Girl, no. engineering? Girl, how, how did we? How did, how did we get <laughs> here? Just, Girl, who, who? I, I, was, I was trying to go to Daytona for freak Nick. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm too young. I'm too young, but I was watching. You know, I was watching. Right. And what's, what started out as a journey to freak Nick exactly, ended exactly up in nuclear right. that, engineering. That that engineering. Quotable, right. My dad would be so proud. He would be so proud. No. So originally, you know, when I when I was in in school I mean I, I've told this story before it's, you know I, I was really nervous around math and science and I think it was because you know we don't really teach children the process of learning, right? right. The fact that the, the whole point of learning is going from a place where you don't know something to where you know something, mm-hmm. right? And it's a really, um, it can be a difficult process. There can be a lot of struggle and failure along the way, right? You you try the problem, you don't get it right, and then you do it again. Um, but when I was in those classes as a fourth grader or fifth grader, I was like, oh my God, this is something's wrong with me, right? You hear everybody right. say, oh, I hate math. Girl, I can't do, mm-mm, yeah. not that science Especially stuff. girls. Yes, yes. Especially on. girls. Right, but when you say that around children, mm-hmm. they take that as a license for them not to like math absolutely right? like to not try because we don't un- we don't teach them no struggle is a part of the path to you mastering this discipline mm-hmm. right and it wasn't until like 10th grade that a teacher kind of reframed that for me mm. um so that was when i was kind of like okay i guess i'll try math like i guess i'll give it a try i mean in 10th grade in 10th grade i mean i always got good grades because it wasn't an option in my house to right. get a d like that was whooping season you right. know like right. a d was whooping season okay. you know so you do what you have to do. You meet the bar that your parents set. Mm. But my father saw in 10th and 11th grade, like she's actually doing well. 
So we had a friend of a friend at FAM that was in physics, and that's kind of how that happened. They were like, bring her up. I wasn't considered. I applied to FAM as a business major. Wow. But they brought me there as a student, as a kind of a visiting student, and they treated me like a football player. They took me to the mall, girl. <laughs> they took my daddy to the pool because he likes to swim. We went wow. to Applebee's. They took me to the scholarship office. They was like, no, we got to get this and black they girl in the nuclear They recruited. <laughs> and the whole thing was, they're like, listen, we'll walk with you along this path. Like, mm. we know this isn't your vision for yourself, but we see something, mm-hmm. and we will help you get there so it was a lot of office hours it was a lot of tutoring right like going to the professors and asking them the questions doing the problems over and over but we got it done you know so that it was I had to be convinced you know coming into fam that this could work for me and they just kept showing me like look this is an option this is a path this is a path so it was a lot of good people giving me really good advice do you see that That has to be done with, you know, young girls who are in high school and college now that it seems like they have to be convinced Mm -hmm. a little bit more than, you know, males do Mm -hmm. to enter the Mm -hmm. field. And Mm -hmm. what has it been like, you know, navigating that or talking to young girls about entering the field? Sure. You know, there's a lot of research on this, like the gendered nature Mm -hmm. of not ambition, but how that ambition is displayed. You know, so we get a lot of kind of um, conscious and unconscious messaging as women about what our lane is and what our place is and this type of thing. And it's interesting, the older that I get, the more sensitive I become to those messages. Right. right. And I think it takes you becoming a woman to see how society feels about women. Mm, absolutely. Right? Um, but definitely, I think reaching out and just being explicit with young with young girls and and women on this idea of self-selection. Right. Mm. Um, this idea that, you know, you don't have that. There's some research that says men will apply uh, to a job having only like 50 to 60 percent of the qualifications mm-hmm. where women we need like 85 90 mm-hmm. before we're like mm, I'm okay i'll shot. apply yeah. right, right. yeah like we're, we're selecting ourselves out but also they're not really looking mm-hmm. in the places where we actually are yeah no mm-hmm. absolutely and marina you became is, is it the first black woman to get her phd in, in nuclear engineering from mit wow mm-hmm. that's amazing but it's crazy to think that in the day and age that we're in right now that into 2018 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ish, that we would just now be having our first. Well, so it's interesting. So nuclear engineering as a discipline is is rather young. Right. When you think about like physics or chemistry, okay. like we've been we were studying this back in Africa, right? <laughs> so like this is this nuclear engineering came about in you know the 1940s after the Second World War mm. when we detonated our first nuclear weapon, right? Mm. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. That was like the birth of nuclear engineering. Mm-hmm. So you think it's only been 70 plus years that the field has been in existence, but you know I, there's plenty of firsts still in this year. My homegirl Sierra Civil, shout out to Sierra. Um, she just became the first uh, African American woman to graduate from University of Michigan in oh. in nuclear engineering, and that was like earlier this summer. So wow. we're still we're still, still making still making moves. Still one hundred percent making Marina, history. Yes, <laughs> keep keep making history. Marina Robinson Snowden. Again, you were honored with Black Girls Rock, and we're honored to honor you for our Working Woman Wednesday I today. It. Um, and we just we appreciate you sharing your story. And just before uh, before we let you go, like Shay Parker said, you know, for young people that listen, young ladies, young men. Mm-hmm. Uh, Again, we tend to have a negative thought when it comes to things like mathematics. And I know that there are more STEM programs out here. We just did a STEM event with young people in Northeast D.C. What would you say to the struggling math student right now Mm. uh, who, like you, you you went all the way to 10th grade before you said, let me go major in physics. By 10th grade, I was so checked out for math. I did did what I had to do to get the grade because, like you said, Mm -hmm. bad grades were not acceptable. So I would do what I had to do to pass the class Mm -hmm. or, you know, to do well in the class mm-hmm. um but outside of that i didn't really retain the information because mm-hmm. at that by 10th grade i felt like you know math is just not my thing sure, sure uh, and like sure. you said i noticed a lot of adults around me would say Co-signing the same thing so it. like right. you're saying i think uh how we use our language around mm-hmm. young people is very important mm-hmm. but to that young person at in any grade right now listening that that thinks math isn't for them mm-hmm. or thinks that they, they'll never be good in math, what would you say as as a nuclear engineer? Sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, I think I think when you're in the building stages, when you're trying to master the material, it's about discipline, okay. right? It's about doing a little bit every single day. Because okay. it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a marathon. Consistency. It's, a mar- it's the same thing with trying to get a six-pack, right? Like, you got to do them things every day, right? right. And you got to be <laughs> diligent about what you eat and, right? It's a holistic approach. So you really have to think, you know, I... You, you be compassionate with yourself. Understand it's a process, mm-hmm. right? But but know that failure will be a part of that. And every single day you do a little bit more. And mm-hmm. you'll start to see results. But you can't, we can't look at things as like, it's not microwavable, right? Like, you're going to be in here. You're going to have to do this work. You have to, you know, sit low in that squat in this math class. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and then you'll start to see the returns. And I think, I think, you know, 
in my story, the importance of the teachers, right? Seeing that, um, having a growth mindset that these kids can get there, right? Mm-hmm. Meeting them where they are, using analogies that resonate with them, right? right. Bringing their lived experience into the classroom because that's all it is. Math is numbers. It's not subjective, right? The answer is five. It's, it doesn't matter where you came from, <laughs> what right. you like to eat, right? Like, it's, that's the answer, right? True. So okay. that's power in that field that, like, you can come in from any point because this right. is numbers, you know? So feeling empowered but being committed to doing the work and being patient mm. with that because this is... My my whole academic um, experience has been one of delayed gratification, right? Mm. I've been in school. I'm 30 years old. I just got out of school a couple years ago. You right. know what I'm saying? So being yeah. okay with the fact that, like, I'm building, I'm investing, I'm planting a seed, I'm tending a, a garden right now, and the harvest is going to come. But you yeah. have to be faithful. You have to be, you know, um, um, convinced of that truth and then put the work behind that faith, right, in discipline. You have yeah. to do the work, do the problems, and then you'll see you'll see the return. There it is. Marina, mm-hmm. let everybody know how they can follow you and keep following Oh, your man. movement and supporting sure, it. Sure, sure. So I'm on Instagram. Um, so my Instagram is um at M Robinson Snowden. I also have a personal website that I need to do better at updating. Okay. <laughs> but yes, the struggle, I'm looking at it. The I'm struggle you continues, out. right? The struggle continues. But yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter. I do a lot more um, professional posting on Twitter. So I'm at M Robinson or at M Robin Snow on Twitter. Um, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to speak to y'all. Yes, congr- thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks thank for you. coming. We appreciate you. you. Yeah, and congrats on everything. Awesome. So let's let's keep going and hopefully. Someone was inspired by this story and is thinking, "Hey, I could, I could major in physics. You got me. <laughs> you thinking. absolutely can. Physics, electrical engineering, computer science, chemistry, environmental engineering, climate change is a thing. So many okay? different fields it's, you can get into, it's, and it's money on the table. They will pay you to go to school. Mm. Okay, there is no, there is no um, student loans and debt in STEM. It is Ooh. not a thing. Okay, so." I, Y'all I have, hear I that? Have, <laughs> come on, it's, it's money on the table. Yeah, yeah. There is no student loans in STEM if you're smart. If you go out there and hustle for that cash, if yeah. you do those applications for those scholarships, mm. I was and fortunate And don't be enough. smart and black. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 and the woman, hold on, they're trying to throw the money in your face. Right. Okay. So, I mean, you got to you gotta think strategically about your path, right? Mm. And the fact that, like, you don't have to be $30,000 in debt if you, don't, if you don't want to, right? There's ways to do. Absolutely. You can go into law from engineering. You can go into medical school from from from, from engineering, mm-hmm. right? So thinking creatively about these pathways and how you can kind of get around this unfortunate educational system that we find ourselves in. But yeah, it's money on the table out here, 100%. All right, go get the money. Thank <laughs> Secure you, the bag. Secure the bag with Marina, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> this was so much fun. You know when it's feeling right, right, right.